In one important respect, SEO is like any other business. Your chances of success depend a lot on how tough your competition is. I'm going to show you a way you can check out your SEO competition, even if you're not a professional SEO and even if you're not technical, with a really simple, really easy to use, and really affordable tool. I'll be back in just a moment to explain. Hi, I'm Ross Barefoot with Horizon Web Marketing and the Horizon Web Marketing Academy. Before you invest money in an SEO program, it pays for you to check out your competition online. That's going to give you a clue as to whether your chances of succeeding in search are going to be really good and you can do it fairly affordably, or whether it's going to be a really tough battle and you're going to have to invest a lot of money in it, or if it's just going to be impossible. So I've found a great tool that I've been using over the last few months in order to aid in assessing my competition or the competition of my clients for any particular search online. And I'm going to show you how to use that tool. I do want to qualify this a little bit by saying that a complete assessment of your competition can be pretty, com pretty complicated because there are a lot of factors involved. And it also has a certain amount of subjectivity to it. So this is not meant to be like the complete way to assess competition online, but it'll give you a good way to at least get a, a fairly basic idea of how tough your competition is online. So let's take a look at the tool that I'm talking about, and I'll show it and demonstrate how to use it here on my screen. The tool is called SERPWorks, and it's developed by a company down in Australia, and I'll just say as a disclaimer that I don't have any financial relationship with them, so this is not like some sort of an advertorial. Now, you can go to their website, which is SERPWorks, show it up here at the top, SERPWorks, S-E-R-P-W-R-O-R-X dot com. And um, it, one of the things that makes it really easy to use is it's basically just a browser extension that runs on the Google's Chrome uh, browser. Now, I'm not sure if they have varieties available for other browsers, but I use it with Google Chrome. If you, in case you're not familiar with how to use browser extensions, I've done another video on that and you might want to take a look, but you really don't even need to know much about browser extensions to make use of this tool. Just go to their website and they've got a button there, at least at the time I'm making this video right now, called Try SERPWorks for Free. Now before I click on it, I will tell you their trial period is pretty brief, but at the same time, if you uh, want to make use of this tool on, on an ongoing basis, it's only $10 a month, so it's a very, very minimal fee, at least at the basic level. So in order to install it, just click on it like this, and what it will do is it'll try to open up a browser, uh, a, basically the Chrome Web Store, Google's Chrome Web Store, and this would be the way you would normally add a browser extension. Now you can see that there's a button up here at the top. I already have this running in my browser, but if you didn't, you could click on this button, you could add it to Chrome, you create a trial account, and then you get going. Now for purposes of illustrating how I'm going to use this tool, and I'm not going to show you all the features of this tool right now, but I've chosen just a website at random. I'm in Colorado, and so I chose this website in um, Denver that does uh, water uh, damage, remediation, and restoration. So again, this is just a random example. I don't know who these people are, but it looked like a pretty, pretty professional website. Yet when I do a search for that for, on flood restoration Denver, they're on like page four. So let's say I was this company and I wanted to determine whether I, if I hired some SEO help or did some SEO in-house, I could move up to the first page. Well, we're going to take a look at two key SEO metrics. They're called, or factors, they're called authority and domain seniority. Now, authority basically, and I've done videos on authority um, before, but authority is basically um, a measurement that tells Google how good the quality is of all the other websites that link to your website. And domain seniority is basically just how long your domain has been alive on the internet. These are two that I look at for one reason. They're two of the hardest things to change. When it comes to changing your authority and improving that, you have to 
be able to convince high quality websites to link to you when it comes to domain seniority you really have no control over that unless you were to buy a different domain if you registered your domain three or four years ago and your competition has registered their domain 20 years ago they're going to have something of an advantage it's not an insurmountable one but it's something of an advantage so let's take a look at those two factors for Rytec water damage specialists and for this I'm going to go up to the top right and you can see now that I've installed SERPWorks I have a little S icon on the browser at the top right now in order to start using it I open this up and you'll see it has search settings and then I can click to enable SERP metrics or to enable th something called page metrics. Now, when you install the browser, actually these will be turned on by default. What it does is enable something called an overlay. So now when I refresh the page, now that I have those overlays working, did you see how this panel parked up, uh, popped up over on the left? This is a panel that is composed uh, by SERPWorks, by the plugin, based on a whole lot of third-party metrics and measurements that have to do with this website. And I'm going to look at just three. I'm going to look at trust flow right here. And this is a measurement of how good the backlink profile or the, the how quality um, this website would appear to Google in terms of all the other websites linking to it. And we're going to look at this number right here, 17. That's the trust flow or the authority of this domain, Inc. Dot com. Now down here there's another authority number and I always look at two because um, both of these are rough measurements uh, by trusted third-party sources but I, I like to get some correspondency and so domain authority is by a company called Moz, Trustflow is by a company called Majestic. Domain authority on this site is 31 so keep those two numbers in mind 17 and 31. Now at the same time let's scan down here and let's take a look at the domain seniority listed here as domain age. Notice this domain has been around for 19 years so it's a pretty well seasoned domain. Alright now that we have that information at hand let's go back to our search results screen and you can see how I've typed in flood restoration Denver Colorado Denver CO. I'm going to refresh the page now that I've enabled SERPWorks and now I'm going to scroll down and you notice here that there's another overlay where my mouse is on every one of the search results that come up on a search for a particular keyword and what it will do is give me a quick snapshot of the people who are ranking for this domain and now I'm going to just take a look at the numbers for these competitors this one has a trust flow of 64 a domain authority of 87 and then the domain seniority, or the age is 20 years. Well, I would expect these two numbers, domain authority and trust flow, to be very high because it's a national website, homeadvisor.com. So it would be very difficult for any local business to compete on those two numbers, trust flow and domain authority, with a, a site that has no, the, these numbers that we're looking at, 64 and 87, are very, very, very strong numbers. It'd be very tough for a regional or a local business to match those kind of numbers. But does that mean all is lost? Well, let's scan down just a little bit more here. We see the next one is the Better Business Bureau. Similar situation here. They've got incredibly strong numbers. But Google doesn't just go by those numbers they also go by other factors so now let's take a look at the number three result, result servepro.denvereast.com now this is definitely not a national website and look at what their numbers are they've got a trust flow of 15 they've got a domain authority of 15 and notice their domain age it's six years so for our particular subject website, the one we're looking at, Rytec, they are stronger than that particular website in terms of their website authority, and they have more seniority in terms of their domain age. But is that a fluke? Well, let's look down here and take a look at a couple of others. This one here, Belfour, is also a local site. Their trust flow 
and their domain authority are stronger than the site we were looking at, about the same age in terms of their domain. But notice the number five result, Abbott's fire and flood restoration. Very weak numbers here. Trust flow of seven, a domain authority of 23, and then number of years, the age of the domain is five. Now, this is just a snapshot of the authority of these respective websites and their domain age. But what it tells me is basically it is possible to rank on page one for our search term, which is flood restoration, Denver, Colorado. It is possible to rank on page one with the numbers that we are seeing for this particular subject website. So if I were advising them, I'd say, yes, some SEO effort would stand a very good chance probably with a fairly modest cause, cost, pardon me, modest cause, modest cost of moving them from page four to page one. I'm just, I don't want to make this video too long, but let's look at another market and how this plays out a little differently. I'm looking at this website, also a very professional website. It's a Denver Real Estate Group, and they also are ranking on like page three or page four. So when I call them up, notice the numbers I reload the page with SERP uh, works running. I have a trust flow of two. And I have a domain authority of 16. And then I have a domain age of 11. Let's do a search for real estate, Denver, Colorado. And we'll go ahead and do a, re uh, I'll just show you what the search results would look like without SERP works. Basically, it's just a bunch of listings and I'd have to track each one down separately. And now we'll reload this with SERPWorks enabled. And now I can take a look and I see, okay, page one for this particular search term, Century 21, Remax, ReColorado.com. Uh, that's about the closest one to a local site, ReColorado. And they're running trust flow of 33, domain authority of 48, many, many orders of magnitude stronger than the website we were looking at. Then I have Denver Craigslist, Coldwell Banker Homes, Denver Boulder Real Estate. Now at this point, number 10 here, I do have a trust flow of eight, domain authority of 12. I have a much older domain, 14 years. So it might be possible, in this case I would be, I would say the competition here is fairly, uh, fairly strong. We've got only one result on page one that has numbers that are anywhere similar to numbers that most local businesses could achieve. So I would probably advise a client in this case, it's unlikely that you're gonna be that one listing on page one for this term. Basically, this gives you an idea of how, of one of the ways that I go about assessing the competition when I'm getting ready to do SEO for a client's website or when I'm considering whether I should advise a client to do their own SEO. Now, if I was advising, for example, the Denver real estate company that we were looking at, I'd probably say you're never really gonna have much of a chance of ranking for real estate Denver, Colorado. I might tell them to start looking at other, perhaps smaller communities around Denver, and perhaps we could do some competitive analysis on those, and for different queries, maybe they could rank. You can see if you can spend a couple of hours looking at results and comparing those numbers with this particular tool, SERPWorks, it saves you a lot of time from having to track down separately all your competition by going to their websites one at a time, trying to figure out how strong they are. So again, this is a great tool for being able to quickly and fairly accurately assess the strength of your competition. I'll be doing other videos on how to do research, assessing the strength of your competition, but maybe this is enough to get you started. Again, my name is Ross Barefoot with Horizon Web Marketing and the Horizon Web Marketing Academy, and I look forward to seeing you again in another one of my videos. Bye for now.